Well, you're back, <laughs> yeah. and you're back. <laughs> Spirit of Radio Sunday, ongoing mm -hmm. history of new music. I mean, what's going on here? It's like CFNY, the original CFNY team is here. Um, maybe, I don't know, they ran out of ideas, or, <laughs> <laughs> or, or we were still around and desperate. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, you know where, I first talked to the station, uh, I sent them an idea mm, a couple of years ago, I guess, about um, bringing back some of the music that, that hadn't been played in a while and kind of drifted away naturally in some cases. And I just thought, hey, this is something you guys should look at and, and why not? I think the time is right. And I also, at the time, listening to The Edge, it was reminding me uh, for the fir first time in years, it reminded me of CFNY in the 80s, uh, where there was a, a mix of music uh, that you know went from uh, pop, electronic side to a, a quite heavy rock side and everything in between. And I think for a number of years, uh, The Edge had become uh, more of a rock station and mm -hmm. by, by the music that was coming out. I think the music had changed, what, what was alternative music. Uh, has changed, so I thought you know this might be a good time to bring back some of that music. Can I, can I tell you a yeah. secret about this? Yeah, yeah. 2004, when I was the program director here, yeah. I, I went to the general manager at the time. I said, you know what we ought to have on the station Sunday afternoons? He goes, what? He says, well, the edge equivalent of psychedelic Sundays on Q107. And the look I got, but no, 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 no. The, why? He says, we are not doing anything that could jeopardize psychedelic Sunday. <laughs> no, get that out of your mind. So, yeah. and that was 2004. It took uh, many changes of management before somebody came along that entertained your version of the idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think a lot of people had the idea. I think it was sort of, hey, that would be a good idea. But it's, I think it's an amount, uh, it amounts to uh, the right management, people that see it that mm -hmm. way. And I think uh, it's just the timing happened that way. Timing is everything. Well, it is. And, right? and the other thing, too, is that... that Music has changed quite a bit in the sense, music fans have changed quite a bit in the sense that all the old silos, all the old tribes have broken down. Mm. So uh, it used to be, I mean, when we were at the, at the station the first time, mm. um, you were either an alternative kid or you're yep. a, a rock kid, right? Yeah. And you couldn't go back and forth between yes. the tribes because you'd get beaten up. That's right. So, but now that doesn't exist anymore. So uh, new music is new music, whether it's old or new, whether it's rock or alternative or punk or pop or, or whatever, it's whatever I happen to have on my iPod, and it's whatever I happen to be in the mood for. Yeah, that I like, yeah. 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 Scott, can you talk about, since you were at CFNY from the beginning, can you talk about what made it so special to work there? Well, I would say, and I wasn't there from the very beginning. When did you so start? 84. Okay. So it was early-ish, and it would sound like it seems like the beginning now, because <laughs> it's, it's 2014. But uh, that's so 30 was, years ago, you realize. Yeah, that's a long time ago. <laughs> so I was one of the early guys, for sure. And I think, uh, so what was the station to me? For, what was it to me to work there? Yeah, or, I mean, what, what yeah. made it so special on, on, on the dial? Yeah, I think it's yeah. because nobody else was doing it. And it was very unique uh, formatically. It was playing essentially a lot of music nobody else would touch. Uh, some would eventually, as, as uh, you know, a lot of these artists were being heard for the first time, became mainstream. But it was exciting to be at a place, or wanting to be at a place uh, when I first got in there that embraced music that I liked, that nobody else played. Uh, it was just, and in radio terms, there was nothing like it. There was a few. Back not in, in Canada, states. but yeah, it was not all commercial. in the U.S. It was maybe one station in Boston and L.A. and a few, but that was about maybe it, Chicago. Right? Yeah, uh, but beyond that, there's nothing in Canada. No, nothing even close to college it. radio, maybe, but nothing yeah. commercial. Yeah, and yeah, so being commercial radio, here's a place I could uh, be a part of cool music, play cool music, and get paid. <laughs> Which was wow. Real. Okay, we didn't get paid a lot. Not a lot, though. That's true. Yes. Good because point. we it was all about it was all about being on a mission. Yeah. And uh, we were very, very enthusiastic yeah. about the mission. Yeah. We weren't making. No. Now I'll tell we you. We had club gigs. We that had helped. club. Well, yeah, yeah, and video road shows. Thank God for those. Yeah. Right. Because that actually helped me with the rent a couple of months. But I was making. I'll tell you. Okay, I'll tell you what happened when when uh, I was when I came here. I was music director at a radio station in Winnipeg, mm. and I was working five days a week and making twenty three thousand dollars a year, which is more money than I'd ever made in my life. I was absolutely fantastic. I had a nice apartment, all the rest of it. I came here to do all nights, five all nights, 
every week plus one Saturday morning for seventeen thousand five hundred dollars a year. <laughs> so again, they may have back then exploited our youthful exuberance. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Mm. But it was awesome. It was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> it was an exciting time. It was. And uh, Alan, you uh, three years ago you left Chorus. You left the Edge. I was asked to leave. Right, right. <laughs> Let's make that point um, distinction there. Yes. Yeah. But you were popping up everywhere. I, I, I would hear you on uh, Jazz FM 91. I heard yeah. you in the morning on Boom 97. And, and of course, you were a big part at uh, getting the Indy 88 launched yeah. as well. Um, I have no portable skills, so the only thing I can do is radio. Fortunately, there were some people to hold my hand through a period of time where they, they allowed me to, to do what I could do and uh, pay the mortgage. <laughs> Um, but it's it's like you were still building that Alan Cross brand, like, you know, the secret history of rock that mm -hmm. you were it was heard on astral stations and. Uh... Yeah, it's again, you know, I, I spent twenty five years with Chorus and everything that came before it, and I managed to build up a little bit of brand equity. And again, you know, Scott will tell you that anybody in this business has a best before date on their forehead that they cannot see. And what you have to be able to do is continually refresh yourself in some way. Otherwise, you're going to come to the end of the line. And you got no place to go and nothing to do. I mean, we've seen a lot of train wrecks over the last 30 years of people who thought that the radio gravy train was going to continue forever, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. So you have to, you can never coast, you could never take uh, take anything for granted, and you can't rest on your laurels. you got to keep moving forward. If not, get a job in a bank. Mm -hmm. So, Alan, I wanted to uh, touch on... Uh, with streaming sites, with so many options uh, for content, I mean, how can, can we keep radio relevant? And I want to open this up to both of you. Mm -hmm. No, I've got some pretty strong feelings about this. I think streaming music services are absolutely awesome. In fact, I work for Songza. And I think they're great, but they have their place. Um, a streaming music service cannot tell you why a song, an artist, a scene, an album, uh, a genre matters. You need somebody to tell you the stories to make the music come alive. You, it gives you, you know, the knowledge is, is part of an investment in the music. So if you know more about it, it makes everything about the experience of listening to music richer. Your iPod cannot do that. A streaming music, music service cannot do that. Sometimes you have to have somebody take you by the hand and force you to listen to something before you go, oh, I get it. And radio has always been very, very good at that. Now, radio can continue being just a one-way push medium with an FM frequency and a transmitter. Uh, radio is going to have to evolve into IP delivery. Uh, but it's happening, and it will happen. And, uh, I mean, there's, look at this place. I mean, there's, there's billions of dollars of infrastructure in, uh, invested in the radio industry. Uh, they're not gonna, it's not going to die. It's not, not, nobody's going to see it go down. It's just going to evolve away from AM and FM into something however else. Mm -hmm. I think the other factors are um, the locality mm -hmm. of radio. So radio can, uh, in a certain town or city, uh, connect. So the announcers, uh, the news, the information side of it uh, between the music connects with the audience and what's going on in that city. And uh, streaming services are generally national, international, international. So that's one advantage. The other, the other two is I think like a brand. If you have a strong brand, like like The Edge, um, people trust it. Uh, so there's so much, for example, new music out there, but you trust The, the Edge to do all that work, to go through all the It's a crap filter. Thousands. Yeah, it's, it's a filter. It's yeah. a curator of stuff and goes, here's what we believe uh, is the best for you, that you like in, in terms of new music. We're gonna, we're gonna make it easier for you. And I think people are busy uh, and it's it takes a lot of time to discover music. There's so many sources out there. There's and, 25 or 30 yeah. million recorded pieces of music out there. Yeah. Uh, who's got time to go through it all? Even if you find something you like, there's always going to be something in the back of your head going, what else is out there and what is everybody else listening to? So you want to be part of a group as well as an individual, which is kind of a tricky thing. And, and radio is one of those, you know, that, that cultural gatekeeper one of them that that you know keeps the really bad stuff away. We listen to all the bad stuff, so you don't have to. And <laughs> believe me, yeah. yeah. No, but it, we, yeah. we can't we can't do everything, but we can give you you know a place to start and tell you some stories along the way, right? Which is really important. Yeah. I mean, the stories are, yeah. are are huge when it comes to making the music come alive. Yeah. 
mean, absolutely with, with the ongoing history of new music. Uh, last week, listening in, I, I heard music from Singapore and China. Yes. Uh, can we expect uh, more of that on the ongoing history in your other show, Adventures oh, in Vinyl? I would imagine we can. I just haven't figured out what they will be yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, over the next couple of weeks, <laughs> I was talking to some people about this. Uh, I said, we're going to do a show on quirky male vocalists. Better be playing some Perubu. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna play some Beefheart? Yes, we are. <laughs> oh, Jeez. So uh, yeah. again, you know, this is a show that yeah. should that should not work because the host talks too much, plays a lot of obscure music, and never mentions the call letters of the radio station in the body of the show. Yet it's still here twenty, however many years later. Expecting any other uh, CFNY alumni to come back? Hmm. The, the Mars Bar. Uh, I don't think he would. I think he's he's got his own little world. And he's doing very well with it. Um, hmm. Yeah, we you know we talked about having him as a guest on yeah, the show, sure. but I'm not sure he's at another station. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm not sure it would work out. Yeah, there sure. were a couple of people. A couple of people approached me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I won't say who, but uh, a couple of the people have. Uh, I got an email this morning, as a matter of fact, oh. from somebody we know. Yeah. So I'll we tell you have about that later. Yeah, we have talked about it a bit, and I think it's definitely. Uh, in fact, you know, just after this this interview, Alan and I uh, had uh, put aside time to talk about uh, the spirit of Radio Sunday, and now that he's back at the edge, so we've had a few uh, conversations already, but uh, we've got a lot of ideas, and and I know that we're pretty excited about yeah. doing right. some cool stuff. So yeah, I think that would be part of it. We've lasted long enough so that we could actually call some shots, <laughs> which is amazing because you know back in the day it was just like, hey, we have a great idea. I said, no, you're just an announcer. Shut up. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, what do you what do you want? I, yeah, and I think that the biggest challenge in, in bringing back some uh, old personalities, I think the biggest challenge, as I was talking to our boss, is that uh, that we because um, there's so many stories about the radio station. And things that went on and the people <laughs> behind the scenes oh. that we have to try to remember to keep talking about the music. Yeah. Because there's and a so lot of stories. Some people. But we have to keep it focused on the music. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Somebody, that, I mean, there's a book here. Yeah. You know, but some people are going to have to die before we tell some of these other stories. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, what happened to that microwave that one night? Uh, the guy who got a headache and shut off the transmitter and went home. <laughs> that or being locked out of the studio. Being locked out of the, the studio. studio. Yeah. Uh, that horrible couch in the control room that nobody wanted to sit on because of the DNA that was left behind. Mm. Smoking uh, pot in the studio. Oh, who would do that? No. No. The time I almost killed that girl with uh, a couple of codeine pills. Oh, I did. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. it was bad. She was allergic to Cody. Didn't know it until. Oh, she had a bad headache. I thought I was doing her a favor. Oh. Turns out I almost killed her. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's a few stories. Yeah. One or two. That's just a sampling. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That, that's perfect.